from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Etobicoke, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the souls of the faithful departed and for the improved health of her family and friends. From all who are gathered for this celebration, our thanks go out to the donor for the gift of this Mass, and we wish her a very happy birthday today. Today is also very special for me because six years ago on this day, my mother died, and may her soul rest in peace. As we begin this Eucharist, we ask the Lord to give us the grace to realize that we are sinners, but to realize also that God is a God of mercy and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, look with compassion on our weakness and ensure us your protection by stretching forth the right hand of your majesty. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from the trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Incline your 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After healing a man who was paralyzed, Jesus left the house where he was teaching, and he saw a tax collector called Levi, named Levi sitting at a tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. The new year was just a little over six weeks ago, and many of us made all sorts of resolutions. Stop smoking, get on a diet, do more exercise, give, give up watching too much TV, read some more books. 90% of us <clears throat> don't even remember some of those resolutions. It's only been six weeks ago, and many of us have fallen away from it, and I'm definitely one of them. Three days ago, we started Lent with Ash Wednesday. Then, too, we made some resolutions, but not resolutions that you and I chose. They were suggested to us straight away from Ash Wednesday. Turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. And so the resolutions that we have are some things that we have done year in and year out, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Beautiful things indeed that have been suggested to us. And how do we actually put that into practice? During the summer, we speak about road rage and speeding and people not taking care of things. As we go into Lent, we speak about prayer and fasting, things that we do very naturally and normally. When I was the parish priest up in Thunder Bay from 1989 to 1992, the winter chapel during the season of Lent, small thing right on the outside of the church, or at one wing of the church, was packed. People would be there every day during the whole season of Lent. And I'd ask them, why not all the year round? Because there's a tradition during the season of Lent to spend more time in prayer. One of the beautiful prayers during that time was the way of the cross fills us with a great sense of gratitude and love. As we get down on our knees and we say, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by the Holy Cross you have redeemed the world. Now, all these things of gratitude and prayer, almsgiving and fasting are things that are in general, but what do we do in very practical terms? Colleen Moran, who read the first reading from Isaiah, gives us in very practical terms what we should do. Now, Isaiah used the metaphors from the Old Testament. He spoke about removing the yoke from the people, stop pointing a finger at people. In our modern 2018 language, we would say stop bullying, stop criticizing people, do not destroy them by gossip. Do not destroy their character and point out their faults. Do not be selfish, but share your food with others. This is what Isaiah told us, and that was thousands of years ago and is so relevant with us today. But somehow or the other, they all seem so negative, more or less like the Ten Commandments. Do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not... It seems to be a whole lot of do nots. But we need something more positive. And I'd like to share with you uh, a beautiful book written by one of the people from the ne Mexican First Nations, a person called Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote a book called The Four Agreements. Be persons of integrity. 
Do not assume anything. Do not take things personally. Do your best in all you do. Simple commands, but it contains so many things. And I'd like just to share with the very first one, be persons of integrity. When you and I give a word, keep faithful to it. Do not mean something that your words do not imply. So often we are doing so many good things. People will say, well, I'm going to help in the hospital. And when you ask them why, it'll look good on my resume. I'm going to give up sugar and sweets and soft drinks. Why? So that I can lose five pounds. I must speak about prayer. Why? Because as a priest, I should be known to be a person of prayer. As T.S. Eliot said, we do a lot of very good things for a lot of very wrong reasons. And that is just not being men and women of integrity. That is not, as Isaiah says, lifting the yoke from people and stop pointing a finger and destroying them with your words. You and I have been called as people of integrity by the very fact of our baptism. You and I are people of prayer. But how would you feel if you realized that among this community of prayer, among this community of believers, among this community that wants to do good, that we have sinners in our midst? We have adulterers and gamblers. We have alcoholics and all sorts of people in our midst. And if we knew who they are, would we keep them aside? We don't want them to be with us because they may contaminate us, very much like the scribes and the Pharisees in our gospel today. Why do you eat with tax collectors and sinners? So what do we do? We cease to be people of integrity. We hide our sins, not only from other people, but we hide them from ourselves. And we live lives of hypocrisy and mirrors, hiding things from everybody around us. Jesus has called us to be men and women of integrity, to use the word that has been given to us to build up other people. Do not use the word to destroy others in gossip or even to destroy yourself. How often do we pull ourselves down? Well, I'm not so good. I'm ugly, I do not know how to do things, I don't have this talent, I don't have that. That's not true, and that is not even humility. Because you and I have been made in the image and the likeness of God. And there is always good within us, and that is what it means to be men and women of integrity, is to recognize that good and to be able to put it into practice and to help others to come closer to God because we as a community are models for other people as well. They support us and we are an example to all of them. Why should we do all this? Because as Jesus says, he calls us just like he called Matthew. As you notice, he's called Levi. Luke and Mark and John call him Levi. But Matthew knows who he is. He's a person of integrity. He says, I am Matthew, a publican. I am a tax collector. Living up to what he has, and yet in spite of all these difficulties, he has been called. This is what it means when Isaiah says, lift the yoke from other people. Do not point a finger. Help them to come closer to God. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together for the church, that as men and women within our faith community, we may be men and women of integrity, living up to the word that we give others. We pray to the Lord. For Pope Francis, who has been a model to all of us, who does not really can take personally the criticism, but goes forth preaching the good news, we pray to the Lord. For the marginalized, the homeless, especially during the winter, for those who are shivering with cold and without food, we pray to the Lord. For the people of our First Nations and for all those who suffer because of loneliness, because of other addictions, 
And because people will not help, we pray to the Lord that we and the members of the TV faith community that watch every day, we may experience the compassion of our loving God, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us and continue to give us day by day through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the sacrifice of our conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its working, we may offer minds well-pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble, <coughs> humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice we sing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his fashion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. 
nourished with the gift of heavenly life, we pray, O Lord, that what remains for us a mystery in this present life may be for us a help to reach eternity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of our celebrants and all of us at the Daily TV Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday.